In this Electronics and More video, I'm going to show you a workaround that I came up with to power this laptop. While I was using this computer, I noticed a burning smell, and along with the burning smell, over here in the back left-hand corner, was a little bit of smoke that came out. Once that happened, I noticed the screen dimmed down and it went into battery mode. The power adapter was no longer being displayed. So at that point, I knew I had a problem with the power supply portion of the circuit board for this computer. Because this computer is an older model, it's not really worth taking it apart to repair any components on the board. So I needed to come up with a way to use this computer all the time and not have to have it relying on the battery. Because not only does it no longer run using the AC adapter, but it also does not charge the battery anymore. So I'd have to actually remove the battery, charge it manually using either my RC charger, set it to three cells, charge the lithium ion batteries, or buy a charging adapter for the battery in this computer. And to me, that's a big pain in the neck. So I didn't want to do that. I wanted this computer to be powered just like it was using an AC adapter. And I really did not care if it had the battery anymore because this computer stays pretty much here and I don't travel with it. Right over here is what the battery looks like for this computer. And I'm going to show you right now exactly what I did in order to make this computer run using an external power supply. Now in order to connect AC power to the port where the battery plugs in, I first have to identify each one of these pins to see where the voltage is being applied. I'm going to be using this digital multimeter set for DC volts. Needle probes right here. Show these in another video. They're excellent, especially if you're working on vehicles. I'll post a link in the video description area. All right, so I'm going to do is go to each one like this. All right, right there's 12.18. I'm going to go to the next pin. 12.18. Go all the way down the line and make sure every pin is accounted for. There's nine of them. That's pin 5, 12.18. Eleven oh eight, eleven oh eight, and over here we're getting nothing. All right, so that tells me it's probably another positive. Yep. So these two on the right are positive, and these two on the left are negative. So negative, negative. Pin five, which is right there, is also negative. And I'm going to make the two on the right positive. Now the 1108 and 1108, that's going to be used by the computer to identify the battery. So I'm not going to be interested in that. I don't care if the computer shows it as battery not present as long as the computer runs. Just like it's on an AC adapter, that's all I'm looking for. So what I did, I took another battery and I broke out this piece right here and I connected up a power supply which was actually 13.75 I'll show you in a minute so what I needed to do was reduce it down to 12.6 because in here you got three lithium ion cells connected in series each one is 4.2 and fully charged 4, 8, 12, 2, 4, 6 so you have 12.6 and then each one of these three batteries is connected in parallel with another group so you're doubling the current in order to operate the computer, you're going to need a fair amount of current, 3.5 to 5 amps, to make sure you can run the hard drive, DVD, as well as the monitor. So I'm going to need either a switching power supply with the regulated output between 11.5 and 12.6 volts that will supply up to around 5 amps. Unfortunately, I didn't have one of those on hand, but I did have an older linear power supply that had a 5 amp output and it was designed to put out around 13.8 volts. So what I did is I opened up that unit which I'll show you in a minute. I adjusted the potentiometer 
to reduce that output voltage down to 12.6 volts. Let me show you the other connector, how I connected it up. Over here you can see the older trip light, precision regulated DC power supply, up to a 5 amp regulated output. When I took this cover off, the potentiometer was inside. I just measured the DC voltage off the two posts and reduced it from 13.8 volts down to 12.6. Now the connector, you see the one in the battery right here, I had to make sure the new one was properly connected. So right over here, you can see what I did, hopefully. I made sure it's positioned the correct way, so when this is turned upside down and inserted, it'll work properly. Battery negative from the power supply goes to the two pins on that end. I did a jumper from the end to pin 5. So it's 12 volt negative, negative, and negative on the fifth pin. And the far right has two pins at 12 volts. Simply take this, plug it in, like that. And I can flip the computer over now. Okay, let me power it up to show you. And now I'm going to turn the computer on. Now before, when I went to start it, I was having a problem that the computer was actually clicking on, clicking off, clicking on, clicking off. And that was because the switching power supply that I used was 4.5 amps. It didn't have enough current to keep everything running and it kept tripping off. So when I used this one, everything worked perfect. Now you're going to get a warning right here, which I don't mind simply telling me it's not identifying the battery because those pins that weren't used, 1108, 1108, and possibly the other ones, is what allows the battery to communicate with the computer. And I can let this boot up, and it works perfectly. Thanks to this workaround, I'm able to save this computer and use it instead of throwing it away in the trash. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to rate it a thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Also be sure to check out my video playlist as well. Thank you very much for watching.